Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to focus on some very interesting comments from Intel concerning not only the release dates of their upcoming products, but perhaps most importantly, performance targets and some other promises as well. Quite honestly, some of this stuff from the company over the next couple of years sounds absolutely awesome, particularly when we start to get into Battle Mage slash Meteor Lake. But first things first, let's deal with the release date, shall we? Intel are stating that the first generation of products, which of course is Alchemist for the discrete GPUs, is going to appear in Q2. Now, to be clear, these are the gaming variants. With the third quarter, we will see the launch of the workstation cards. Now, to be totally honest with you guys, this is actually earlier than what I'd been hearing. About a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I'd been hearing Q2 for the discrete GPUs, but more recently, a couple of sources who have been really accurate previously, that's all I can say on it, obviously I can't narrow down who told me who, what, um, but they basically said that there were some software issues and it was slipping to Q3, but perhaps Intel have resolved them because obviously software issues are a lot harder to, sorry, a lot easier to resolve than a major problem with the actual, you know, silicon itself. So this is good and I'm happy that Intel are on schedule because quite frankly with you all, I really want competition in the marketplace. Moving on, however, let's discuss more of the performance targets and products. So, Alchemist, as we've already seen, is not going to be a high-performance GPU. I mean, you can argue RTX 3070-ish levels of performance is pretty damn good, but it's certainly not going to be on par with the highest-end SKUs from either AMD or NVIDIA. But this is certainly not going to be, uh, you know, the state of affairs in the long term. And basically, Raj Akadori has said that, first of all, Celestial is going to be a product which has already, A, had its architecture work started. So Intel have already started the production of Celestial, but also it's going to be targeting the, quote, ultra enthusiast segment. Now, to be honest with you guys, that obviously means that you're going to be seeing products over a thousand US dollars because GPUs are not becoming cheaper. I do firmly believe that Intel are going to be very wise and offer products which are certainly going to cater to the lower end as well, but they are certainly going to be more than happy to sell you lower volume products, which are obviously, the, you know, the RTX 3090, not as many people would be interested in buying that as, let's say, at RTX 3060 Ti. But, yeah, the price of the 1390 NVIDIA have more than happy to sell you those cards. So, Raja says that we are going to be seeing uh, Celestial um, actually be targeting this. The thing is, though, Celestial itself is not going to launch until 2024 plus. There is not a specific release date here in this uh in this uh, image you can see, but between Alchemist, which is the first generation of cards, and Celestial, we have Battle Mage. This kind of matches what I was hearing 2023. I'm hearing that they're aiming to get it ready as soon as possible. I'm hearing early 2023, you know, the first quarter, maybe second, but honestly, you know, things can slip and problems can occur. And I do also suspect some of it could be down to what NVIDIA and AMD do as well. But my guess is that Intel are just going to want to crack on as quickly as possible. Now, according to... Uh, well, I'm going to actually read this uh, verbatim from Raja Kodori. Over the next two years, with Battle Mage as well as Meteor Lake, we will cover additional market segments, reaching all the way to enthusiast class GPUs. Meteor Lake is a brand new architecture that will enable tiled GPUs to be integrated onto a single 3D package. This is super exciting. It allows us to offer discrete class performance and efficiency of integrated graphics. Now, Obviously, at the end of the day, Raja and his team are not providing us exact performance metrics that they're aiming for here. However, I think we can all agree that logically it makes a ton of sense and again matches what you can imagine Intel's strategy would be in the longer term. Both AMD and Intel want to put out products which, to be honest with you, have a great amount of performance and are going to relegate, you know, lower performance discrete GPUs as basically obsolete. But furthermore, 
in the mobile side of things, they want to push NVIDIA out as much as possible. Now, to be fair to NVIDIA, they have a lot of they have a lot of good innovation, and I don't suspect that NVIDIA and Jensen are going to want to go quietly. I think that they are going to really push hard back, but I think both AMD and Intel will want to offer solutions to their vendors, uh, you know, kind of I plus I or A plus A, and it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what kind of performance that we can have, especially given by the time that we see these architectures launch, for example, you know, Meteor Lake or, or later, you can just imagine that we're going to have crap tons of, that's a technical term, amount of memory bandwidth, you know, DDR5 is going to be pretty good, and obviously there's going to have to be probably robust caching systems and stuff like that in place, so it'll be, you know what, bottom line, it's going to be really cool, at least in my personal opinion. Anyway, he also added, that is Raja, not me, and this is just the beginning of the strategic advantages that the tiled architecture will give us. We've already been working on our celestial architecture with the goal of performance leadership in every segment we participate in, from low-power mobile to high-performance workstations. Now, obviously, the goal of leadership is not to say that they will get leadership, because I'm sure it's not like NVIDIA are going to be like, eh, you know, we actually want Intel to be ahead for once. Clearly, all three are going to be vying as... They're, ju they're just going to be as absolutely aggressive as possible. And again, this is just awesome for us as customers. I have heard that Battle Mage, which again, of course, is going to follow um, Alchemist, is going to be tiled based. And uh, this is going to be for the discrete to GPUs as well. I think I've mentioned that in a couple of videos at the moment. But I have absolutely no understanding of what the actual fundamental architecture is, which is clearly a little different from, say, RDNA 3. However, to be fair, Battle Mage is coming out later than RDNA 3. It's going to be a really interesting time in PC gaming. Uh, that's my personal opinion. And I think that given the prices of the next generation of products from Intel, sorry, from uh, AMD and NVIDIA in terms of the market, you know, the GPU market, it's going to be needed. And I know I'm kind of rehashing, you know, what I said uh, kind of earlier on, but the market, you know, GPU market, I'm not saying, that, you know, even if, let's just say that the worst happens from um, Alchemist, let's even say, that it was RTX 3060 Ti or below for Alchemist. And again, I think that's not realistic. I think having below 3060 Ti is just not going to happen. I think it's going to be above 3060 Ti for gaming. But let's just assume it was at the right price point, you're still going to have a crap ton of people who would be absolutely more than happy to take a GPU or two from Intel's hands. Because at the end of the day, most people you know you guys know that like people just don't want to spend like a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks on a graphics card and i'm sure some people you know if they can afford it that's great but it's certainly not the average market and there's something really to be said that you know someone who bought an rx 480 for example back in the day you could still make a really good argument that if the 480 was available at the same price, which obviously it's not, but let's just assume for a second it was, you could make a really compelling argument that the RX 480 at that launch price, at that price would probably still be a really good buy. So, yeah, um, I think there's a lot to be said. And while the bleeding edge is important and the bleeding edge is awesome and really exciting, yeah, I kind of, uh, I, I do also really want to see some pushing, shall we say, towards the low to mid range as well. With that said, thank you very much guys for checking out the video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.